As I said earlier, the ND also describes how light behaves when it enters a transparent object. And the major behavior that you're going to expect from light when it enters a transparent object is it's going to bend. Now, the way that it bends is defined very much by the ND, and of course, the ND also describes the density of the object in terms of the way that it's going to bend background objects and such like this. So this is normally what you would consider to be a glass material. The ND is 1.51. And I have the attenuation set for 999 meters right now, and I've got the transmittance color set for white. This is how you create a transparent material. The reflectance 0 and reflectance 90 colors can be left to black, and you can turn on force vanilla. And of course, I'll have all these here in this first part, 0206, transmittance and attenuation, part 1, and we're going to make it clear. So these are all your clear materials, and again, in order to make a material clear, you set the transmittance color for anything other than black. You set the attenuation distance for whatever you want. For right now, we're just going to leave it at 999 meters. And the ND for a realistic ND for a transparent or translucent material. And because of the fact that we're looking at a transparent material, we're going to keep the roughness real low on this particular example. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of these objects here that I have set up that have different NDs and to a certain degree, a certain amount of different roughnesses as well. This is the render for that. And the first one we can see here is air. And air is ND of 1.001. .001. And you can see, even though technically speaking, you think that we're rendering within an environment that has air in Maxwell, we're really not. We're actually rendering in an environment that's using vacuum as the medium. So that even by creating an object that has air, you create this very soft bending of the light. So that's something to take into consideration if you ever need to create like the invisible man or something like that. Now, water is going to have an ND of 1.33 in general. Here's some Pyrex glass that's going to have an ND of 1.47. Some plexiglass acrylic is an ND of 1.49. Regular glass would be 1.51. Cubic zirconia would be an ND of 2.15. And this one right here I wanted to show you, this is a non-zero transmittance. What basically this means is that when we're dealing with such a high, and, and I'll just open this up, when we're dealing with such a high attenuation, we can actually have the value of our transmittance at 1 or anything above 0, and we'll still get transparency. We don't have to have white in order for it to be transparent when we have a high attenuation. And this is something that you can play with if you want to. But the idea being is that these two parameters, the attenuation and the transmittance colors, are kind of like two sides of the same coin. The idea being that the brighter the transmittance color, the more transparent it becomes. The idea being that the higher the attenuation number, the more transparent it becomes. So these two can kind of balance one another, and you can have a great deal of control over how your transparency looks in terms of color by simply modifying these two in relationship to each other. And then the ND, of course, will remain constant no matter what these two parameters are saying. Let's go back to our render. So here I have some colored glass. Well, what does that look like? Let's go back and look at the material. So right here, you can see that this actually has a color. It has a hue of 130 and a saturation of 11 and a value of 244. This is important. Any value, say, of like 255, will not show any color. It'll just be white. So bear that in mind when you're going really high with these pale colors. You don't want to go too high, otherwise you just won't see any color show through in your render. But here we can see that colored glass, and it's the same ND. And now here we've got a custom glass that I made that I set it for roughness 25. However, there's also a wizard, and let's go ahead and take a look at that. Wizard glass. You can see we have high grade, low grade, and we have frosted. If you choose frosted, let's cancel out of that. This is what you're going to get. Now you can see here that this has some parameters about it that are a little bit different than just altering the roughness of glass. And it's going to give you a different look. So it's worth playing with creating your own and then playing with the wizard to see which is going to give you the look that you need for your particular object. 
And then this is the wizard low grade glass. So you can see how this is a little bit different than the color glass that I created. You can use the wizard glass or you can create your own. It really doesn't matter that much. I find that if you're wanting a particular type of glass, it's better to look up those values because you can easily find glass values online. And I think that it just looks better personally. So that said, that's your basic how to create transparent materials and glass. Let's go ahead and look at the next lesson here, which deals more with transmittance. So we've got a transmittance color now. We've established it at hue 351 and saturation of 181 and value of 244. So all these are going to have the exact same transmittance color. However, they're all going to have different attenuation. You can see this one here has nine centimeters. And you can, if you just click this little drop down, you can see you have different measurements. Generally speaking, you're going to want to stay away from millimeters. This is too little. You're not going to, unless you're dealing with very thin objects, you're not going to see much transparency. So it's either going to have to be centimeters, decameters, or meters in order for you to be able to really see any kind of true glass type transparency. And of course, I have the force Fresnel turned on here. I have the reflectance 90 set to white, and I have the same color that I have in my transmittance here, but I have a value of 11, just because that's one of the proper ways of setting up glass. You don't have to do it that way. That's just the way I did it. All of these are the exact same settings, except for I just changed the attenuation value. So here it's one centimeter. So let's take a look at that render so that you can see how that plays out. So here we have an attenuation of one millimeter. And you can see here, it's, it's not really transparent at all. Whereas an attenuation of one centimeter gives us pretty decent transparency. If it's a little dark, that's okay. It, it, it's still at least transparent. We go up to two centimeters, we're seeing more transparency, three more, four centimeters more. Generally speaking, this is about the range that I would find most glass objects to be, you know, somewhere in the centimeter area, which is pretty much where I'm keeping. I go all the way up here to 10 centimeters, which is also one decameter. And that is probably the upper range for what I would consider using for colored glass. Anything that's more attenuation than that, and you're just not going to really see your color unless you've got like a really, really thick transparent surface. So that's attenuation and transparency and how ND plays into those things. And I invite you to look over those materials. There's a lot of good stuff in them. And we'll have even more to look at in the next few lessons.